Alrighty, here we go with chapter three on rope, cordage, webbings, and knots. And uh, Dave Canterbury on this uh, chapter lists several knots that I've never used, but I'm going to practice using these uh, here pretty quick. So anyway, um, one of the main uh, elements of your kit, your, your backpack, your bug out bag, your, you know, what you carry with you off into the bush is going to be your cordage. And it's one of your main elements. You're going to have to have it or you're going to have to make it yourself, which I do not know how to do. It's something that I would like to practice uh, eventually, but right now I'm not going to practice it because, you know, I'm doing this book review. So, uh, cordage is, is used for making a fire. You can, you know, unwind it, shrivel it up, and you can start a fire with it. Uh, you can use it for lashings and bindings. Uh, it's definitely used in a lot of traps and trapping uh, game, uh, you know, small game that is. Use it in fishing and a lot of other things. I mean, there's just, <laughs> there's just so many things you can use that in uh, for. But, um, Dave Canterbury reminds us in pretty much every chapter of this book on the Bushcraft 101 that you have to keep in mind the five C's and this cordage has to have a multiple of uses, see? And um, he goes on in this chapter to describe what cords are, what type of cords there are, uh, rope, uh, webbing, Mule tape, he gives great definitions on all this. Uh, on how to make uh, your natural cordage. There's, you know, a diagram here that I'm sharing with y'all that shows how to make the natural cordage, of course, which is something that I just touched on. And then uh, you got your basic and useful camp knots, which he goes in great depth on this. Now, one that I've used on several occasions, and I didn't even know it had a name to it, it's called a slip knot. And uh, I really like that uh, that knot. I've used it so many times. <laughs> Just tying things down, tying things up, you know. And then you got your bowline knot, which is really good for um, an end of the line application where you need a loop to pass a line through and tighten around an object such as a ridge line of a shelter, which I found that these are pretty good um for that is tying everything down and then you got your lark's head knot uh, and it's a self-tightening knot which that's one reason why i like to use it a lot and i've used this one um several times um but i've i've used it for uh my tarps you know and in and things of that nature and you can use it for all kinds of situations that you need it and then of course he, he lists a jam knot and he goes on to the trucker's hitch, which I've used that on occasion before, but I didn't know that's what that was called. And it's just a combination of two slip knots. But, you know, he goes in great depth with diagrams and directions on how to make these knots. The, the Prusket knot uh, is used to attach a loop of line to another line of a larger diameter. Um, it, 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 will, it will tighten when tension is placed on it and uh, also on the larger line um but it you know this this has helped a lot for me i've used it several times as well now the fisherman's knot i've never used a fisherman's knot and then of course he's got the clove hitch which i've used that before on occasion and uh, i found it to be very helpful you know uh for me in the in the uses that I've used it on now lashings uh I've used the sheer lash and the cross hatch and uh as far as toggles and bindings I've used those I didn't know that they ever had names to them you know I just tied it all up and made it work but um uh a, a toggle you know you can use that for a tripod and stuff but uh, overall, this chapter has a lot of really good information in it. And what I liked about this chapter is that 
the diagrams on how to actually make the knots 